Good morning, everyone, on this lovely Friday morning uh, when we are going to talk about process change devices. And I'm sure that uh, you've already seen a number of uh, very good talks discussing various subjects. And first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Borkemi for uh, this opportunity, uh, allowing me to present on a subject that is something that uh, I'm really passionate about and something that really uh, deprives me of sleep on a daily basis. Uh, and it's also lovely to see this environment, to see so many friends that uh, I've been working with or we've been in contact with for the last uh, 15 years ever since I've started with decontamination sciences. There are people here like uh, Mr. Siegmund who know where I started and where I'm, what I'm up to now. And uh, how he sticks with me still, that's a mystery, but uh, we'll skip on uh, this one. So we are going to talk about PCDs, but first of all, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit more about where I'm coming from, my background, and also where uh, Aseptium, the company that I work uh, with and that I founded, uh, where we started. So uh, Aseptium is really a, a small collective of passionate uh, engineers and scientists that try to come up with new solutions to problems that need solving. And uh, decontamination sciences is such a vast, vast field of little issues, little problems, and cleaning is one of those absolutely critical elements, and that's basically what we uh, focus our attention on. Uh, we are an uh, ISO 13485 um, certified uh, company and a laboratory, and most of our time is really devoted to research and development, and every now and then when we are lucky, good products come out of it. And those are products that really change the game. And the process change devices, the subject that we are going to talk about, are no different in this particular case. So why are we even talking about uh, process change devices? And I was thinking for the last couple of days, if I can find an example or a parallel to the concept of process change devices. So if we now assume that our goal in general is to deliver safe and sterile surgical instruments to our patients, I wanted to compare it to a situation that I deal with on a daily basis having an uh, eight-month-old child. When you take a child on a trip, what is important is that the child reaches the destination with you. So our sterilization indicators would be then similar to our grandparents who welcome you when you get there and they see the child and they tell you that they are okay, looking lovely and so on. With cleaning indicators, it's more about you making sure that you have actually packed your child in the car and strapped him uh, properly to the seat. It's critical because if the child is not there and you get to the destination, it's a failure and grandparents are not going to be happy, trust me. So why is it important? We have very, very complex surgical instruments at the moment and they are getting more and more complex on a daily basis. Our cleaning processes are also, because of that, requiring uh, more complexity, approach that requires a lot of knowledge and dedication to find out how we can make sure that even those most complex instruments with features that are notoriously difficult to clean get, uh, get properly uh, decontaminated. And one thing that I wanted to, to share with you as a quick story is uh, uh, I have unfortunately undergone a colonoscopy a uh, couple of weeks ago, and on one hand, uh, you know, knowing what we know here, it's a petrifying prospect when you are facing this. But when I was on the table and when I was uh, seeing exactly what the surgeon was doing, especially when it got to a moment when uh, biopsies were taken, I was absolutely amazed how much blood was there, present. 
I've seen other surgeries before, like robotic surgeries, where you just see small trickles of blood, lacerated wounds, and, uh, and, and not much content. But this time, it was absolutely horrific to understand how much blood is there. And then you imagine that piece of tissue that biopsy is taking is then traveling through your biopsy channels, leaving the, the traces of the blood that was there, plus the bits of the tissue that was removed on the inside of that channel. So after I've seen that, I was just praying that the man or a woman who had that instrument in them before me were all okay, right? Because again, we here really know what that can mean. So when we are talking about process change devices, the fundamental thing is how do we make sure that we can replicate that complexity of contamination and complexity of instruments, because if our process challenge device at the end of the day is there to tell us, yes, your process is great, it needs to be challenging. And by definition, and you don't forget that, by definition, process change device is a test that needs to be equal or harder or more difficult to what we do on a daily basis. If you have an easy test, it's great because you just say, oh yeah, that's clean, tick box, done. But in reality, it's just giving you false assurance that you are doing something right while you might have a fundamental problem. So let's jump further into it. Um, in the ideal world, if we wanted to keep our patients safe, you would like to test every single instrument and say, yes, we've tested every single instrument and we are safe. But uh, anyone who's spent a little bit of time in sterile services and has seen, for example, a 15-din basket cart loaded with hundreds of instruments understands that that would be impractical because you would have to have an army of people uh, on the clean side testing those instruments. So that's something that we can't really do. So first of all, testing individual instruments routinely every cycle uh, in and out is something that is impractical, that can't be done. Uh, then there is another problem. Imagine you have a set of uh, 50 instruments. Now you've taken one instrument, used some sort of a test on it. You've contaminated it again with something different. So can you put it back into that set? Probably not. You cannot definitely release it for sterilization. What you can do is put it back in and then return it to the dirty side for another processing. So that's a fair waste if you had 50 other instruments in that set and out of sudden you have to redo the lot. What you can do is to, you can cheat and just take that one instrument, put it in an empty basket or with other instrument and uh, run it again. This is great, but find me that one person who will remember that there was that one instrument that you've just taken a moment ago. It's, it's just absolutely impossible. So we have come up with this concept of process change devices to make this work easier, to have a consumable product that is going to mimic the difficulty of cleaning surgical instruments in such a way that it's going to allow you to do it routinely without causing a massive disruption to your, uh, to your practice. So that's why we have the, the practical solution. That's what we are aiming at. Okay, it costs additional money, but it's still nothing in comparison to the money that would have been otherwise wasted on trying to test every single instrument uh, from the set. So let's see what is important about PCDs, because you know, you've heard Everyone has heard about PCDs by now, I hope. Uh, and you've seen different ones uh, on the market, different ones being used. You have uh, the ones that contain biological contamination. You have the ones that contain chemical um, test soils and so on. So what is important here? As I mentioned before, the idea is to find a replica or, or a representation of real hard challenge. So we have to make sure that whatever test soil is used to make it clinically relevant, it needs to be the same or very similar to what you find on surgical instruments on a daily basis. So one approach we have taken here is to uh, mix uh, sheep brain homogenate with sheep blood. We know then that we have tissue fragments, we have huge abundance of, of proteins that 
represent different chemical and physical properties. So some of them will be hydrophobic, some of them will be hydrophilic, some of them will dissolve easily, some of them will stick to surfaces. And that's what we want. We want to have that worst case scenario. But test soil on its own is not everything because anyone who is even uh, been around this hole here have seen how very different the surgical instruments are, how the complex mechanisms, especially uh, I was admiring some of the instruments upstairs yesterday. When you look at the end effector of the robotic instruments, you have those intricate uh, mechanisms, you have linkages, you have joints. What if contamination gets to the inside of it? How am I going to replicate it with a process change device? Because if you then have a, a strip of paper with some red paint on it, and you say, yeah, this is my process change device, I've just cleaned it, does that mean that that very complex mechanisms got cleaned at the same time? No, and that's our problem. So we have to uh, look at solutions that represent the complexity of our modern surgical instruments. So we have done now uh, almost two years of research on different types of test soils, and we have tested everything that uh, our standards are telling us, comparing them like for like one to another. And this is ma the main reason why we have developed our own test soils, just to go that one step further, to really look at those worst case scenarios. So. Um, it's not only the composition, it's how you apply it, how you post-process it. There is an absolutely wonderful um, article that I believe that was uh, in Central Sterilization in 2018 when there was a case of fibrin uh, PCDs uh, presented. What is absolutely amazing about it is when you look at that process, what they did they covered stainless steel with blood and then washed it for a certain time in water to dissolve hemoglobin out of it just to leave the fibrin. So you think about it now. Are we washing the instruments to remove uh, the red pigment first and then wash them again to remove what's left? No, we don't. So basically what those were, they were like, half pre-cleaned PCDs. So you have to find logic in application of process change devices. It was a fantastic article because it shows you the steps and shows you also how very different the nature of proteins on surfaces is because this is something that uh, causes nightmares to us in the laboratory when you test different types of proteins processed in a, in a different way. And I tell you one more thing. Because we are talking about proteins, we are talking about the physical and chemical properties. So we have been recently looking at developing test soils that are not animal-based. They are plant-based, and they are already available. If you want to find out more, please come and talk to me uh, later on. Those plant-based test soils also contain an abundance of different types of protein with those different uh, physical and chemical properties. And we have prepared them in such a way that we cross-reference them against real blood, real tissue, and we see the resemblance. So going back to test soils, remember about the composition, surface preparation. If you are having PCDs that are made out of paper or plastic, and you are saying to me, look, we've cleaned them very nicely, I'll tell you and that... the conference is starting soon. Please make your way to the plenary room. Uh, I'll let you go in a moment, uh, trust me. Uh, so when you have those clean plastic PCDs, I can tell you that's fantastic. This represents all of your plastic instruments covered in red paint. If you have your plastic instruments covered in red paint, they'll be cleaned. If you have other instruments, stainless steel, covered with blood and tissue, you have no idea what's going to happen to them. And it's also another element. We have to remember that taking an instrument from the theater 
and thinking about its journey through the decontamination department, it's not just the fact that it spends half an hour in a washer disinfector. It goes through a, a plethora of different processes. So when we think about the decontamination process, let's all think about the whole thing because they all matter. If you are doing your pre-cleaning wrong, if you are not, for example, pre-soaking and you are not controlling that environment, it will have an effect at the end. So the critical thing is measure at the end of your process whether you've done your job right. If you don't measure, you simply don't know. You're ignorant to the fact whether your process was done properly. So when you can measure something, and there are technologies now available that allow us to do it in a very nice, consistent way, when you measure, you know, and you can act upon it. So here I prepared this sort of very nice... Um, uh, oh, see, I'm saying that I've prepared something very nice. That's very humble of me. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted you to look at this triangle because whenever we are talking about reprocessing, we are talking about effectiveness, which is how well something was done, efficiency, so how quickly it was done, and the cost. So with our PCDs, for example, everyone who comes over to us saying, oh, your PCDs are great, but this is a huge cost to a hospital to make sure that uh, you, know, you can um, prevent this. But you cannot think about those things in isolation. This is a concept. That's why we are talking about uh, effectiveness when you join your a f uh, washer disinfector, for example, with your pre-cleaning processes, with your cleaning chemistry. If this is done right, if you've worked with the right people to make sure that your processes are set up in such a way that are producing lovely, clean, safe instruments, this is where your effectiveness box gets ticked off. Then efficiency is all about looking at trying to make that process get more and more instruments through in the same amount of time. And the last element is the cost. So that's something that you also have to monitor, but at the end of the day, what the most important bit is, is obviously the effectiveness. And by testing, protein is a fantastic marker to test for contamination because proteins are building blocks of all organic life, whether you're looking for bacteria, traces of tissue, whether you're looking for blood, Proteins are there. So if you're looking for proteins, this is great. And uh, uh, if you find a nice um, uh, piece of technology that allows you to test things, benchmark your processes, you can stay on top of your performance all the time. And this is the greatest feeling you can get at the end of the day, knowing that you've measured what you've achieved and that measurement shows us a fantastic result. So, just one more word about test soils, because as I mentioned, we've been working on it for a very long time. And uh, through all of the research that we have done in laboratory, we have found now that when you do it right, when you have the right combination of ingredients and you have abundance of proteins and use protein detection technologies, whether they are visual or semi-quantitative, you have resources then to optimize processes. I've been working with a number of companies making the processes for washer disinfectors better, optimizing chemistries to make the most out of what we pay for. This is basically our best situation. When we gather data, we learn, we measure, and we improve. And this is what R&D, in my opinion, is all about, about making things better. And that is also why I absolutely love the fact that there are so many super passionate people, even here today, that you can talk to asking the question, what can I do to make my process better? Please talk to them because there is, I don't think that uh, we, we have this privilege every year to have this knowledge in one place. Use this, please. So I'm now going back into our approach for the process change device. We have this uh, stainless steel, oh, sorry. 
So you see that we are nearly there. <laughs> uh, we have the, the coupons made out of surgical stainless steel and we inoculate them with uh, protein rich test soil. This is all done in a laboratory in clean conditions by a robot. So every single token has got the same quantity of protein. So you can also trust the fact that if you've measured at the end, you know where you started and where you got to. This is fantastic. And this block that you see in the middle over here, this is the key. Because at the end of the day, you can say that little piece of stainless steel is nothing like our complex surgical instruments. And it's true. So that's why we have this uh, black block where we insert those individual tags and we recreate features of complex instruments. So the first one is representing our box joint instruments, clamps, where there is just a tiny little narrow gap that water needs to penetrate first in order to remove contamination. Second one, second position here, looks at how well our spray arms are going through our mesh baskets and are removing contamination from the bottom. Because the last thing you want to see when you take a tray of instruments, seeing instrument clean on the outside, you turn them around and you think, oh, this has to go again through the process. That's basically what this PCD is testing for. Third option is testing whether your spray arms are working efficiently. And the last one, this is the, the one that is also critical. It's testing our vertical surfaces because our washer disinfectors, they all have spray arms with jets coming from the top, from the bottom, but there is no mechanical energy coming from the side. And all single surgical instrument that I've ever seen is three-dimensional, so it means that it will have vertical surfaces on it. Thank you. Uh, so now, this is just a reminder because we were talking about cost. PCDs, all different types of tests cost money, and we just have to remember that even if we spend money on good PCDs, this is not money wasted because this cost is nothing in comparison to failure. And that is something that I want to sort of embed uh, in our further discussions because I hope some of you found this at least interesting enough to say hi to me later on. So this is me, everyone. Uh, process change devices. Come and talk to us, find out a little bit more about what we can do, how we can help you, because we've been now optimizing cleaning processes for, for years, and we were making sure that uh, our customers and end users get the best performance that they can achieve. Thank you very much, and thank you very much again to Borke Me for letting me stand here. Thank you.